we want to solve the recurrence relation a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 2 to the power of n with a sub 0 equal to 3. Let's begin by generating the terms of the sequence. We know a sub 0 is equal to 3. a sub 1 is equal to a sub 0 plus 2 to the first, which is 3 plus 2 or 5. a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 plus 2 squared, which is 5 plus 2 squared or 5 plus 4, which is 9. A sub three is equal to a sub two plus two cubed, which is nine plus two cubed, or nine plus eight, which is 17, and so on. And now analyzing the sequence, notice how the terms are increasing by powers of two. Five minus two is two to the first. Nine minus five is four, or two squared. 17 minus nine is eight, or two cubed. 33 minus 17 is 16, which is two to the fourth, and so on. Since the terms differ by powers of two, which we should be able to determine by looking at the recursive relation, we will use the method of telescoping to determine the closed formula. The telescoping method is helpful when many of the terms of the sequence cancel out when adding the equations of the sums or differences of terms. If we know the sum of the non-canceled terms, we can find a closed formula. Let's start forming equations using the difference of terms. a sub one minus a sub zero is five minus three, which is two or two to the first a sub two minus a sub one is nine minus five, which is four or two squared. a sub three minus a sub two is 17 minus nine, which equals eight or two cubed. a sub four minus a sub three is 33 minus 17, which equals 16, which is two to the fourth and so on. If we find n differences, the last difference is a sub n minus a sub n minus one, which is two to the power of n. We can determine the difference by analyzing the pattern of the other differences or by subtracting a sub n minus one from both sides of the recurrence relation. And the difference right before this difference is a sub n minus one minus a sub n minus two equals two to the power of n minus one. And now we're going to add these equations together and notice when we do, most of the terms simplify out. a sub one minus a sub one is zero, a sub two minus a sub two is zero, a sub three minus a sub three is zero and so on. The a sub four here will also simplify out, as well as the negative a sub n minus two, and notice a sub n minus one minus a sub n minus one also simplifies out. So on the left, we're left with negative a sub zero plus a sub n. On the right, notice how we have a sum of powers of two. So again, we're left with negative a sub zero plus a sub n equals two to the first plus two to the second plus two to the third and so on, all the way out to plus two to the power of n. Notice on the right we do have a sum of a geometric sequence. Solving the equation for a sub n, we add a sub zero to both sides, which gives us a sub n equals a sub zero plus, writing the sum of powers of two in sigma notation, we have the sum from k equals one to n of two to the power of k. But notice in this sum of a geometric sequence, the first term is a sub one, and we like the first term to be a sub zero. So if we change the index of k to start at zero, two to the zero is equal to one, we're adding one to the sum, and therefore we must subtract one to maintain the equality. This gives us the equation a sub n equals two plus the sum from k equals zero to n of two to the power of k. And because we have a sum of a geometric sequence, we can determine the closed formula for the sum by either using the geometric series partial sum formula shown below, or by using the multiply, shift, and subtract method shown in our text. I'm gonna go ahead and show both methods. So using the partial sums formula for a geometric series, where a sub zero is equal to one, and r is equal to two, we can see below we get a sub n equals one plus two to the power of n. And notice here on the left I have shown the sum of the geometric sequence where the first term is a sub zero. But again, our text doesn't use the geometric series partial sum formula, so I'm also gonna show how to find the closed formula for the sum of the geometric sequence using the multiply, shift, and subtract method. So again, we're trying to find the closed formula for the sum of the geometric sequence shown here above. Using the multiply, shift, and subtract method, we first write s equals the original sum, and then we're gonna form a second equation by multiplying both sides of this equation by r, the common ratio, which is two, and shift the right side of the equation to the right. So multiplying the first equation by two, on the left we have two s, and on the right, the first product is two times one, which is two. Notice how I wrote the two shifted to the right below the two in the first equation. The second product is two times two, which is four. 
the third product is two times four, which is eight, and so on. Notice how the last product is two times two to the power of n, which is two to the power of n plus one. And for the last step, we subtract the second equation from the first equation. On the left, s minus two s is negative s. On the right, notice all the terms simplify out except the first one, and then we still have minus two to the power of n plus one. And then solving for s, we divide both sides by negative one, which gives us the sum is equal to negative one plus two to the power of n plus one. And now we take this closed formula for the sum and substitute it in for the sigma notation here which gives us a sub n equals two minus one plus two to the power of n plus one, giving us a solution of a sub n equals one plus two to the power of n plus one. This is the same result that we had on the previous slide when using the formula for the partial sum of a geometric series. I hope you found this helpful.